You can hear me, right? Yeah. All right. I usually don't need a microphone, but <laughs> I took one anyway. And um, I guess uh, with this fireside chat, we can't really, um, we don't have a fire, so I guess we'll just t talk about chatter. I figured we'd have at least 10 minutes to make s'mores, but right. it's not going to happen. <laughs> Um, I think that uh, as we look at what, it, what companies are doing in the area, I think Chatter is a big, uh, big com component of what people are doing to really start extending the platform and start seeing some results across uh, different, different areas of sales and service and, and really getting companies to be customer focused. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, one of the most exciting things I'm working on right now is with a customer of mine uh, who went to Dreamforce uh, and uh, their name is Siemens. They're kind of if you know General Electric in this country, Siemens is the GE of Europe. And they saw all these huge videos and, and all those great GE videos about turbines talking to engineers. And they're like, that's pretty cool. We want to do that. And so they went home after Dreamforce. And in a weekend, they had a group of turbines integrated into Chatter so that you can actually talk to them. Uh, so that man-machine thing is really cool, though, as, as we were just hearing about becoming a, a customer-centric company. Part of that is, is uh, interacting with your products. And I think that's an exciting area that uh, Salesforce is really trying to bring some thought leadership to their customers on how to do that. Yeah, and it's really, it's really um, the data has started talking to the salespeople and to the service people. And so now things that, that didn't talk your records in Salesforce are now giving people information that they can act on and be proactive on it as opposed to being reactive. Um, and with that, I think we also talk about people using it besides for sales and support. I think we've seen a huge growth in people leveraging the platform to build applications for procurement, for um, inventory management. These, these things were, it's not native Salesforce, but they're building it natively. They're doing what the business needs to do. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, and, and just even, just collaboration. I mean, it's just about collaboration. It's about not being able to operate in silos anymore, collaborating with your partners, collaborating with your customers, collaborating your employee social network and, and how you do that. And, and you mentioned a point that I stress with all of my customers, because uh, some of them struggle with, you know, what's the value proposition for me and Chatter? You know, we're not, uh, maybe, even it's, maybe even it's cultural, you know, guys don't talk to each other, they don't want someone stealing their deal, or they don't want to uh, share their contacts, because that's kind of, you know, their value to the company. Um, but when you start collaborating and breaking down those silos and how Chatter helps do that, uh, it's just phenomenal the kind of productivity advancements that you see. Um, it's 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 transformational, I guess I call it. Yeah, absolutely. How many how many people um, are are using Chatter right now? And, and I guess by that same token, who's not? And so, go, no, you go. I was going to say just for for those that are not, is it just because you haven't figured out how you can <coughs> best use it, or is there just organizational resistance to it? How many say that it's organizational resistance? Okay. It's kind of interesting, yeah. Uh, you know, it's amazing to me. I, I guess I was one of those in the audience. People are, are shocked to learn this, right? But when Salesforce employees go to Dreamforce and Mark gets up on stage and talks about something like Chatter, yeah, we never heard about it either before that. Um, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, and then the next day, you know, my email is blowing up at 6 in the morning and I have... 37 emails, someone's following me. Because um, we just turned it on overnight and didn't tell anyone what to do, what they were going to use it for. Not a best practice for deploying chat. <laughs> and we've learned that since. Uh, but it's, it's integral in our company now. And sometimes, yeah, I still have customers, just like some of you guys in this room don't use it, uh, that still haven't deployed it either, or deploy it and maybe 3% of their users are using it. And so it's not always the easiest thing to create transformation. But if that's one of your goals, it's, it's interesting how that tool empowers that. Right. Does anybody use Chatter to talk with their customers? Does anybody invite their customers into Chatter groups? Just a few? I, I think that's, the, that's really going to be the next big thing with Chatter, is getting your customers to start talking to you as well. Yeah, so, you know, funny, because I, 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 I didn't tell them that, the whole story, right? Um, so Siemens integrated <coughs> their turbines. They had a database of certain uh, wind turbines that they tracked everything that was happening with the turbine. And they integrated those turbines to chatter. You could literally say, hi, turbine number seven, how are you feeling? And it would spit back you know, all of its test results. So you know, we started thinking about it and talking about it. And we're like, well, you know, you're responsible for servicing turbine number seven, but you kind of sold it to these guys. Don't you think they want to be able to do that? 
So the next step for that was we created Chatter Customer External Groups and added the Turbine as a group member. So now they're chatting with the customer. The product can actually participate in the conversation. Um, and it's, you know, we've only done it with one or two customers for them. Uh, but everyone at Siemens is kind of taken, taken aback when they hear they're even doing that. You know, they're like, wow, it'd be really cool in five years if we can do that. We're like, yeah, we did that last weekend. Yeah, I think, I think so besides Shatter, uh, I think you building out your applications on force.com, I think that's the other kind of big transformation that we're seeing is with Salesforce, you have a platform and, and a lot of people have their sales on it and they have their service on it, and that, but they need that data other places. So instead of going to these other places, they've started building and extending Salesforce uh, to do whatever they needed to do. Yeah, it's, it's funny, every once in a while a customer will throw me for a loop, right? And they'll come to me and say, tell me what we don't do that we should be doing. Tell me what your most successful customers are doing that we don't do. Um, and in many cases, it's kind of taking that, it's the platform, it's chatter, it's, it's just looking at Salesforce and, and the whole platform as the way to get the whole company involved. And, and when I start talking about that, they're like, oh, you must be trying to sell me something. And then I re-explain to them I don't have a quote on the CSM. Talk to the sales guys in the back of the room. There are a couple I see. Um, but we have products that let you extend that for free. Mm -hmm. So I have a customer up in Atlanta that decided they really wanted to try this employee social network. And we worked very closely and in the course of a month rolled out chatter free to 9,000 users um, across the company. And there's 15,000 people in the company. So there's 6,000 people that didn't opt in. But we're still pretty happy with the results of getting 9,000 people that never used Salesforce, still really don't use Salesforce. They're not tracking opportunities or cases or, or using the service cloud or the marketing cloud or any of it, but they're in groups. They're product experts that are there to answer questions in product specific groups for sales guys. They're all empowering sales and service to sell, sell and serve their customers better. Um, and it doesn't cost them. Right, and, and it helps everybody become that customer focused um, in their role and helps you become a customer company, which is, which I mean, we've heard about already. Um, I think I mean, that's, that's, that's my key. I mean, that's how I get finance involved. That's how I get HR involved. That's how I get legal involved. All these groups that are part of supporting a company. Mm -hmm. um, and then they get involved and then they're interested in the platform. Right. Then HR wants to know, well, I have all these apps that I'm running, or this old Lotus thing, or this access database, or this SQL database, and the guy that built it for me doesn't even work here anymore, so I can't even change it. And, you know, I'm just kind of keeping it together with, with glue and spit. Um, you know, can we do something for that? And that's when the platform really takes hold, too. And mm -hmm. that's when you really get a lot of traction around this customer-centric company. Yep. And I think, I think the last thing that we'll touch on before, before we take some questions is, um, the App Exchange. Uh, App Exchange just rebranded. We have App Exchange 2 now. There's, they've released more uh, Aloha apps. That it, it's given us as, as users and, and, and everybody as customers more power into getting these apps. Um, and there's been some really great focused apps and some free apps. Yeah. Um, any that you recommend? I always recommend for anyone using the service cloud, the App Exchange service and support dashboards. But that's only because I wrote it. Um, uh, there are some great ones. There are really some great ones. I was literally just on the phone with one of the sales guys I support walking into a meeting because they were updating an opportunity and the customer was watching them do it in the app. We do that a lot. Like, we'll, uh, you probably all happen to you. You're sitting in a meeting with a Salesforce person. They actually open up the app and use it. Um, he opened up the app and all of a sudden sales coach popped up. I don't know if you guys, have anyone seen Sales Coach on the App Exchange? Who's using an App Exchange app today? Just curious. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity there that the rest of you could be taking advantage of. Sales Coach is a great app. A great app. Uh, there's a whole category of apps on the App Exchange called Salesforce Labs. Those are from folks like myself or other coworkers that build something and want to share it with other people uh, or think it might benefit other users. So they're out there. They're not supported. You can't call me up and say, hey, can you change this dashboard for me? but you can change them yourself. For most of you, it's a good place to start. It's kind of this 80% of the way there on a lot of the apps that you need, and you just gotta tweak it for your specific business. 
But um, sales coach is great. It, it's just this whole thing that pops up.